in general studies paper 3 the first question is about the goods and service tax so the question is enumerate the entire taxes which have been subsumed in the gst second part of the question also comment on the revenue implications of the gst so here the question is very specific and in the first part they just want you to enumerate no need to explain just enumerate the various their taxes which are under the gst similarly next one is comment on the revenue implications so you have to specifically mention the revenue implications of the gst both on central and state governments and you have to comment on them comment in the sense you have to write your opinion on the revenue implications you cannot just mention the implications but write your opinion on the implications so see first in the introduction as it is a 10 marks question short answer you have to keep introduction very short maybe 3 to 4 lines you just mention clearly what you want to tell about GST so the evaluator will know your knowledge on the GST you can say that there are 17 different taxes 17 different taxes both by the central and state and the UD unitary governments which have been uh, subsumed under the GST mainly to remove the cascading effect mainly to remove the cascading effect this tax on the tax effect so that everything can be consolidated into a single tax for easy monitoring and easy compliance for the uh, taxpayers so here the idea is one nation one market one tax you can also mention that GST is mainly a value added tax right from raw material to the manufacturing to distribution finally till the consumption at every stage the tax is imposed only on the value addition so if it is like 90 rupees here 100 rupees here the tax imposed is only for the 10 rupees we just mentioned online then also you can say that it is it is brought into India through 101st Constitution Amendment Act see you have to throw little facts here and there though it is a question from economy you can talk slightly online about the quality about the various articles introduced in the constitution for GST you can talk about 246A and 279A that are introduced for GST similarly the 7th schedule the 7th schedule constitution of India has been amended so after finishing the introduction of 3 to 4 lines briefly come to the direct point that is enumerate the indirect taxes see here you have to mention in the state government the various taxes and at the central level central level the various taxes which have been brought under the GST at the state government level the taxes like the state VAT value added tax then the sales tax then the entertainment tax but uh, not that which is imposed by the local body but the state government's entertainment tax then the entry tax we can talk about the octroi tax the purchase tax the luxury tax then taxes on this uh, you know this lottery betting gambling etc all these taxes which are previously under the state government are now what under the gst similarly the central taxes we can talk about the excise duty and the customs duty excise duty you can talk both about the central excise duty as well as the additional excise duty that means on the textiles or on the goods of special importance etc and you can talk about the customs duty the additional customs duty like the countervailing duty the countervailing duty and the special additional duty and finally the service tax see you no need to mention all the subject taxes in the examination definitely it is difficult for anybody to write all subject taxes if I mention some 8 or 9 taxes it is definitely very good for the students who have given the mains examination then now after having mentioned these taxes it is better if you mention one or two lines about various taxes that are still not under the GST that means you can mention about the state government's transaction income property taxes and the petroleum the tax on petroleum products state excise not the central excise which is under GST but the state excise which is not under GST you can talk about the 
electricity duty, etc. So here, if you give a slight online mention about the various taxes not under GST, it will be a complete picture that well, all taxes are not under GST, still government has spared some taxes. So having said that, move on to the second part of the question. Comment on the revenue implications. In the revenue implications, you have to mention the implications of revenue on the center as well as implications on the state. As we know, most of the state governments are complaining about negative revenue implications that are they are able to get less money than before 2017 July. Similarly, at the central government level, talks up talk about the tax base whether increased or not, tax collection has increased or not, and also talk about the future scope. As GST is introduced only two years back, we may have to make wait for a few more years for it to get stabilized. Similarly, at the revenue implications, you can mention both the positive implications as well as negative implications and you have to comment, comment the reason why the negative implications are there and one or two lines you can mention how they can be countered uh, in future. So, now coming to the revenue implications on the center, you can say the average monthly tax collection has increased as per the interim budget report 2019-20 as for the interim budget presented, uh, the finance minister said that the monthly tax collection of government of India has increased from the previous 89,000 crore to 97,000 crore. Though we do not remember the numbers, we can just mention that there is a considerable increase. So, this is a positive implication on central government. Similarly, we can talk about the increase in the tax base. Mostly, the indirect tax payers in India have increased as per the 2017-18 economic survey. As per the 2017-18 economic survey, the overall tax base of the indirect tax payers have increased by 50 percent. This is a fact. There are around 34 lakh new businessmen who have come under the uh, tax net. You can actually comment. You can comment on the reason for that. You can say that registrations for the GST, the GST registrants, the GST registrants actually improved because of voluntary registrations, because of easy tax compliance, and also because to get the inputs, input tax credit, etc. That's the comment you are doing on the fact. Similarly, we can talk about the overall uh, collection that government has got in 2016-17, which is around 10 lakh crore, which is a good amount. Similarly, the growth of the uh, tax collection before 2017 or 2017 observe, the government says there is a 10% increase in the tax collection. So these are the various implications of revenue on the central government level. Now, looking at the state government, one thing you should observe is, the revenue of the state governments, even before 2017, was mostly from the indirect taxes. As you know, the direct taxes are always mostly collected by the central government. So, before 2017, the state's revenue is mostly based on the indirect taxation. However, GST has taken away most of the indirect taxes because of which states initially feared that they would be dependent mostly on the central government for the revenues and to some extent the fear has come to become true because in the GST as we have three pools like central GST, state GST and integrated GST, it is absurd. You can write that the collection falling under the central GST has increased well enough compared to the SGST and GST. In these two pools, there is no much growth in the tax collection. So, so, to counter this revenue implication, the central government has provided a five-year support, a compensation for the state government. So, the five years is going to end in another three years. So, after that, what is the, what is the condition for the uh, state government? That implication you have to mention. Similarly, government expected a minimum 14% annual increase in the tax collection and the government said that if this is not met, the state should be compensated by a special cess. By a special cess. 
Hence, states are as of now safe. However, we have to see what happens after the three years. That is the future revenue implications, the scope of the three years. You have to mention that point. Then, you can also say that the homogenization of the commodity, uh, the tax every commodity. For example, previously, the tax of different states, when it is in their hands, was completely different. Out of the GST, there is homogenization. Every state has to impose the same amount of tax on the commodity, on the goods or services. So, because of this homogenization, because of this homogenization, essentially what is happening is, the GST collection by the state GDP, the GSD, the state GDP, this has almost become standard. That means a state having more GDP is able to collect more GST and state having less GSDP is collecting less GST because of which this ratio has actually become kind of standardized. So in one way you can say one of the implications is that it has led to regional inequalities. Inter-state inequality. In the state equality, because states which are richer, like Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, etc., which has more GSDP, they are collecting more GST and they become richer. And the poorer states, which are less GSDP, are collecting less GST. So, this interest inequality has been increasing because of the GST, is one implication which you can talk about. Also, you can mention that when GST initially started, the IGST the integrated GST, the government collects it and the government gives it mostly to the consumer states. Consumer states, but not the producer states. Not the producer states. For example, if UP is produced certain goods and if they are consumed by Maharashtrians, then what happens is, the, in the IGST or central government collects, will be given to the consumer state, Maharashtra, but not the producer state. So we expect that the consumer states actually uh, get more amount of GST than produce state. But the truth is slightly different. The truth is that simply the state which is having more GST is getting more GST. So even that implication you have to mention. Also, you can say, see, the most implications which I have discussed here are the negative implications on the states. But you can talk about a positive implication also. Last year, previous year, Arun Jaitley has said that 20 state governments has reported at least 14% raise in their revenue because of GST so that you can mention the positive implication. Finally, the conclusion. After discussing all the revenue implications and commenting on them, you come to uh, the conclusion. There you can mention, you can go beyond what is asked in the question. You can say the fiscal federalism should be kept in the mind when the GST uh, is uh, being implemented. So in the implementation, if any changes are required, they have to be taken care of. Also, you can mention that not all revenue implications. The GST actually has made the ease of doing business better in India. And also, the efficiency of tax collection has increased. And you can mention some other benefits of the GST to conclude your answer. So, any questions?